he is like a bullcrap conveyor belt. Like it just it just keeps on coming, Clay. It's almost it's hard to even pick out the individual falsehoods. You're you're overwhelmed by it. You know, you can't actually deal with all the incoming. It's crazy this stuff that he's trying to get people to believe now. But the only alternative, right? The only the only thing that they could do otherwise would be to pivot and admit that some of the things that they've done were really dumb and really destructive and made things worse. The rapid, I would say, rats fleeing from the ship of the Biden administration continues to accelerate. As Joe Biden's floundering and trying to explain away what is going on with this economy continues to not land in any kind of significant way. Just moments ago, before we came on the air, Reuters, not exactly a Democrat uh, uh, or Republican favoring, I should say, polling company, announced that Joe Biden has equaled his all-time low in support. 36% of Americans right now support Joe Biden. I actually believe that is likely too high. As a part of that 36% approval, the economy is overwhelmingly the number one issue in the country right now as everyone is struggling with 8.6% inflation. And Joe Biden is floundering trying to explain why his administration, despite everything that you see, has actually been a success. I want you to listen to what Biden said about how awful the economy was when he was elected. By the way, inflation was around 1.5% when Joe Biden came into office. But he says people couldn't even find things to eat. Might be a surprise to moms out there who still can't find baby formula. Here's Joe Biden saying, you couldn't even find food when I got elected. You all remember what the economy was like when I was elected, a country in a pandemic with no real plans how to get out of it, millions of people out of their jobs, families and cars, remember, backed up for literally miles, waiting for a box of food to be put in their trunk, just a box of food to be put in their trunk because they didn't have enough to eat. The previous administration lost more jobs than its watch than any administration since Herbert Hoover. That's a fact. All based on failed trickle-down economics that benefit the wealthiest Americans and hit the middle class and working people the hardest. But we came in with a fundamentally different economic vision. He, he is like a bullcrap conveyor belt. Like, it just, it just keeps on coming, Clay. It's almost, it's hard to even pick out the individual falsehoods you're overwhelmed by it. You know, you can't actually deal with all the incoming. It's crazy, this stuff that he's trying to get people to believe now. But the only alternative, right, the only the only thing that they could do otherwise would be to pivot and admit that some of the things that they've done were really dumb and really destructive and made things worse. And in doing so, they would be implicitly, whether they say it or not, admitting that people on the other side who are saying, hey, Lockdowns are terrible. You should get out of them as soon as possible. Hey, vaccine mandates are a bad idea. Hey, 1.9 trillion of spending when we're already through the worst of the pandemic is crazy. Those people were all right. The problem is they don't want to give any credibility to that because that means there might be an even bigger shift in power. I do think, though, Clay, you're, you know, because we'll, we'll be talking more about this today. Every day now, it just feels a little bit like the the Democrat legions in the media are having more and more desertions from the field of muster. More and more people kind of going, I'm putting down my sword and my shield here. I don't really want to fight for, for Team Biden anymore. I think that's exactly the story as we move closer and closer to the midterms. And it's important to note when Biden says Trump had the worst economy. Since no, in February of 2020, before COVID hit, the United States had the strongest economy in the history of our country, lowest unemployment rate, virtually non-existent inflation, and the places that have actually recovered after the Democrat-enforced lockdowns that lasted for far longer have actually been red states. But Biden is lying about that. He's also claiming, and this is significant, 
because this is going to be one of his arguments now. He's going to say Republicans are the reason for the economic failures that are going on right now. They're not letting Democrats pass the legislation which would change this when the reality is, and I want all of you to listen closely here, remember, if Build Back Better had passed, as bad as inflation is now, 8.6%, we're talking about inflation that could be 15%. And here's Biden saying Republicans are obstructing us Thank God Republicans are obstructing Democrats because otherwise the worst uh, inflation in most of our lives would be far worse. Listen to Joe Biden talk about obstruction. Well, Republicans do nothing to obstruct our efforts to lower your gas taxes. I propose that. I've asked the Congress to eliminate the federal gas tax for the next, as long as this crisis goes on. Lower food prices, lower health care costs, hopefully soon lower your prescription drug costs. I mean, Clay, <laughs> he's, he's, it's just laughable, all of this. First of all, his own party doesn't support much of what he's trying to push through because it's all a sham. This do away with the federal gas tax. Okay, it might save you 10, 15 yeah, cents say, on your overall gallon is, of gas. This is him throwing pennies at the peasants and expecting yeah. them to be grateful. And everyone's looking at him saying, look, old man, this is not okay. You, you need to stop just continuing with talking points. That not there, there's a level of believability that you need for even government propaganda, right? I mean, Democrats, there are things they can get away with. And for example, and we've said this before, what he's doing right now, what Biden is claiming, they're standing in my way. I would do all these amazing things. That is straight out of the Obama playbook. This is what Obama did going into that big midterm election in 2010. Shellacking in 2010. It's, it's you know, oh, they're not going. And remember, they did have, they did have plenty they had they had a, a super majority in fact right so they were able to get through obamacare they were able to get through stuff and then once the obama administration didn't have anything left that they were able to push once they got you know beaten down so badly in those midterms it turned into obstruction right oh they're obstructing that at least resonated because republicans were saying we're not going along with your crazy agenda thank god by the way with biden as you pointed out the agenda is the problem, and everyone sees yes. it because the agenda is entirely based upon spending a whole heck of a lot more money. And as you mentioned yesterday, probably taxing people a whole lot more, too, which is that's a, the fear right a now. Guaranteed way to push us not into a recession that's kind of like an ouch recession, but in an oh my gosh recession. You raise taxes dramatically on corporations and individuals right now, big problems ahead. And, and a lot of people are not aware that that's what they're trying to do. There's a certain level of acknowledgement right now that Democrats are going to lose the House, may lose the Senate. We'll see how a lot of those races turn out. But they're not going to be able to pass any substantial economic agenda that Joe Biden would like to be able to pass. And if, in fact, that is going to occur, they're basically saying, let's just go ahead and pass whatever we can right now, because who knows when we'll control uh, the House, the Senate, and also the White House, that is particularly cynical because it may take a long time for Republicans to control the House, the Senate, and the White House as well. So whatever tax increase is passed, but could last for years because there may not be able to be the votes to, to pass it and overturn whatever gets passed right now in July in advance of the midterms. And isn't it interesting that, speaking of Obama for a second here, um, you don't see him coming out all fired up in defense of the Biden administration, which would I think it would help with the Democrat base, to be sure. Right. You see, he'll speak. Obama will put out some tweet about climate change. Right. I mean, he, you know, he, he will use the megaphone sometimes. And I just wonder, I just wonder if already there's some understanding in the real Democrat Party power centers of don't don't waste your your energy and don't waste your political capital on this white house we might need it for the next democrat white house because i'm not to, to the earlier point the media is already pulling away a little bit but some of the big voices in the democrat party they're not all saying what a great job you know hillary clinton even for whatever she brings to the table she's not saying joe biden's done an amazing no one's saying he's done a great job that matters well i think it uh, obama's smart and i think hillary clinton is smart you can agree or disagree with their political yeah, opinions. Hillary's a little evil, but, they but are smart. In, sure. They are intelligent people. 
I think they don't have respect for Joe Biden's intellectual acumen. I always thought it was significant that Obama didn't endorse Joe Biden at all in 2020 until he had already gathered and 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 gained the nomination. So he wasn't willing, despite the fact that he served alongside of Joe Biden for eight years. Hillary Clinton's not running then. There aren't really that many people who were involved in the Biden administration at all who were throwing punches and viable candidates in the 2020 Democratic primaries. I think Ob- I think that Biden, Obama did not endorse Biden because he doesn't respect his intellect. And same reason that he picked Hillary as his would-be successor in 2016 and essentially kicked Biden to the curb because he doesn't respect him as an actual leader. And I, I do think that with Biden, they just, in the pandemic year, while BLM mobs were burning down cities and, you know, or areas and cities and going all the stuff that we saw, it was a really destabilizing year for the American psyche. I think that they just figured this old grandpa like guy that everyone knows who's always got this grin on his face and we're going to tell everybody he's a moderate, even though he's actually a Trojan horse for the left, which we said, and that has turned out to be true. But we can make this guy something he's not when everyone's so scared that they just want that national father or grandfather figure, in essence. And everyone hates Trump so much because he's so scary and bad and the pandemic's his fault. You go back, you think about the psychology of it. This was the only I mean, this was we had a once in a century pandemic that created a once in a century opportunity for Joe Biden to actually be the president. And and please Direct I, all the emails about about their cheating and everything else. I get it. I know. But you know, we're dealing with the reality of what actually happened here in terms of he is the president right now and it's not going well. Well, he's the president like Jimmy Carter was the president. And this is where I think the analogy historically makes a lot of sense. Jimmy Carter was an accidental president. He was president because Richard Nixon had Watergate happen and whoever the Democrats put forward in 1976 was going to win. The reason why Joe Biden won is because of COVID. If COVID doesn't happen, Trump wins, I really do believe, a landslide election. The reason why suburban women turned on Donald Trump was because he was not empathetic enough in the midst of COVID, yeah. and they bought the argument that Joe Biden put forward, which was, I'll right. solve I mean, COVID. now people that are walking around double mask with their N95, they're doing it as, as either a show of what is honestly an anxiety disorder or political allegiance. But in 2020, I knew a lot. I knew a lot of people who were like, "Look, better safe than sorry." I'm concerned, and you know that that's yeah. a diff, that's a different thing. I, I I in the in the beginning, I mean, I the first month of the pandemic, there were a couple times in my building I put on rubber gloves because I was like, they keep saying you touch everything. I don't want to get this stuff in my eye or whatever. I don't right. want to get it. So I, I'm not pretending like we had all the answers then. People were scared. Joe Biden was America's grandpa, and now we find out he's actually a jerk. And he's incompetent, and he's not America's grandpa, and the Democrats are realizing this too. Well, and we've got a huge number of people right now that are listening to us that I believe voted for Joe Biden. Every si- I That's really quite do a believe claim, that every Tra- single That's quite day. A claim, Mr. Travis, I, 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 I really believe it because I think a lot of people bought into the fear. I think they bought into the hype, and I think now they're seeing how much of a disaster Biden is, and they're looking for rationality. They're looking for reasonableness. They're looking for sanity in an insane world. And where else are you going to go? I mean, look at some of the Republican governors out there. Not just Ron DeSantis. We give him plenty of, let's just be honest. What we say about Ron DeSantis on this show is just reflecting the reality of the results in his state. Other states, we've got Governor Stitt coming on from Oklahoma. Oklahoma's done very well. Your home state, we've had Governor Leon. It's the fastest growing state in the in He's America done very right well. now, Tennessee. So we've had these models of red of red governance, of Republican governance. Things are great. And you got Biden at the top of the whole system. Things are trash. I think people are figuring this out. Yeah. And white, black, Asian, Hispanic, some of whom who bought into the Biden hype or were just turned off by the cosmetic aspects of Trump, as you'll see a lot of people say now, do you either have 8.6% inflation or mean tweets? Would you rather have war in Europe or mean tweets? I think a lot of people are saying, man, the mean tweets weren't really that bad compared to how much it costs uh, for me every time I go to the grocery store. His remarks come as members of his own party and key supporters 
are getting more frustrated. They're questioning if the White House can muster the urgency to deal with huge challenges from the economy to the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. And the rattled confidence is widespread. A Monmouth poll just found 88 percent of Americans think the U.S. is on the wrong track. That's an all-time low. And the respondents' top concern? Inflation. Welcome back to Clay and Buck. That was a CNN prompter reader telling you what everyone's feeling. And if you are seeing some of the polling, you know the data too. 88% think the country is on the wrong track. Now, look, we need to keep on speaking the truth here. This is what we do. We tell everybody what you're not going to be hearing from the New York Times, CNN, the Washington Post, etc. about this Biden administration and trying to actually hold them to account. Democrats are cutting loose a Biden and Harris. And look, the vast right-wing conspiracy are not the source of these quotes. And all the usual boogeymen that the Democrats and liberals and Biden and Harris and the rest of them have always used as a stalking horse, blaming this one, that one. They can't do it anymore. You know, Joe Biden won because he wasn't Trump, but he needed Trump and he needed COVID to continue the juice in his presidency. And without being able to talk about either one or blame either one day by day, he's lost. He's completely bereft. There you have Kellyanne Conway, who is an astute political observer, and I think she's nailing it on on this one. Uh, Carrie's reading her um, her memoir, by the way. says it's quite good. Um, I know we had her on recently. She's 100% right on that take. I'm sorry? She's 100% oh, right on that absolutely take. Absolutely spot on here. She uh, really gets it. And the entire regime media has built itself as an as a effectively an oppositional weapon and for four years of Trump, that was the that was their only speed. And now what we've seen is that could only work for a certain period after you you take over. Um, and, you know, it does remind me also of the uh, the way that they tried. I'll never forget this. You remember going into the midterms for Trump? They were referring to it as the Obama economy. And everyone's like, guys. I mean, come on, yeah, it's, you right. know, it's the midterms. Like, you're, you're not allowed to pretend that the guy in charge isn't really in charge because things are going so well. And in fact, that's uh, quite a, a, vote of, uh, a vote of confidence in a sense, or rather a, a clear proof of how excellent things were. But I, I do think that they are, they're struggling right now to even come up with what they're trying to sell, which I, I can't remember the last time because they sold so much fear and panic over COVID and Trump. And now what are they going to do? Because those are things that don't work for them the way they did even a year ago. My concern, and I hope he doesn't do this, is that Trump is going to jump in and announce that he's running for re-election in 2024 before the midterms are here. Because then you're right. And Kellyanne Conway is right. And many of you out there listening to us right now, So I think that, uh, look, the Kellyanne Conway analysis is astute on this point, and you're going to see Democrats continue going forward to pretend that they are any, they're something other than a Trump opposition apparatus because people have real problems right now. And pointing to Trump and pointing to Putin, that is another reflexive thing that the Democrats are engaged in now. It's always Putin's fault. And that's because they use this against Trump. They really have these two things simultaneously uh, that they can't escape from now, which is the the opposition to all things Trump, but also tying it into being a Putin puppet and all this stuff. It's just blather. I mean, everyone's sitting around the country going, what is I know it makes no sense. But this is the reality of the apparatus of the uh, media supporting biden right now it doesn't even hold up they can't sell it and i i never i never uh think to myself you know we can get complacent because i'm sure they've got something in mind i'm sure they're going to roll something out after uh after the august recess and you know we're going to hear a lot more about class warfare and about racism in america and things the, the usual stuff where democrats are trying to manipulate people's emotions but we stay the course here friends we stick to the truth We stay mobilized and motivated, and the repudiation that Democrats so richly deserve, oh my gosh, they all deserve, all these Democrats deserve to lose their jobs. 
so hopefully a lot of them will.